What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Magic Site 1.5 Ranger Slash Dex Guide. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into it right now with our race. There are multiple options for your race. You can go ahead and pick the Dwarf. You have the Trogon. You have the Earth King. You have the Qualog. You have the Bandicoot and the Lizardman. But for this run, we'll be taking the Dwarf, which is the best overall pick, in my opinion. Or, well, one of the better ones. Plus four decks starting off as a, a fantastic. HP minus one shouldn't matter that much. Uh, you do start off with a axe and a bow. The bow it was fantastic to start off with, so you don't have to craft that. But yes, I think that's the best race for now. And in terms of our hat, we'll be going with the Robin Hood hat, which makes makes it so that we gain plus one dex, or we have a chance to gain one plus one dex every time we level up. Some other good hats are the Minor Cap and I think the Overworld Helm. Of course, the Overworld Helm is kind of hard to get. Uh, you could also go with the Batwing or things like the Hero Crown. And I guess if you want to challenge yourself, Scourge Mask, but I would not recommend that. For a companion, uh, there are two good companions here. I would recommend the Haste Beetle or the Flame of Hope. We'll be going with the Haste Beetle today because I haven't used it in a, quite a while. And for your stats, I think the best thing to do would be able to get a Dex Bonus as well as the Lockmaster because the Lockmaster trait allows you to open up those gold chests and see if you can't find yourself a Firebow. And what a Firebow does, a Firebow, <laughs> it makes bas basically makes your arrows do uh, twice the amount of damage as they normally do. So let's go ahead and jump right into it here. Obviously, starting off, you want to mine as many trees as possible, as uh, sticks are going to be a necessity for making arrows. And arrows are, are, of course, your main source of damage in a dex-based run. And, of course, in the first few districts, you will be relying on your melee attacks to take out enemies. But overall, the, the dex-based run is apparently, or in my opinion as well, one of the best uh, ways to beat the game. One of the easiest ways to beat the game. But, uh, I'm <clears throat> sorry about that. Go ahead and jump back up here and, uh, Basically, just take out everything you see. You want to level up as much as possible, too. Especially if you're using the Flame of Hope. And you want to try to avoid damage. I've already taken a lot of damage, so that might not be the best example. But anyway, let's continue onwards. The Spider, you know what, Spider? I do not like the look of you. And of course, the Dwarf is one of the basic races, so he does start off with a Wooden Axe. So you can go ahead and uh, craft all the materials that you need. Uh, our Wooden Axe did just break there. We'll go ahead and press R here. Go into our inventory and see if we can't craft ourselves a pickaxe, a new axe, as well as a sword. So let's go ahead and do this to make our pickaxe handle, and we can go ahead and make ourselves uh, three wooden blades, or we're gonna need three anyway, so let's go ahead and do this. Split those, go ahead and make our last one. Bam, and then we need a sword hilt, just like that, and then go ahead and make all of our tools, as well as our bow. The bow will not be very effective uh, early on because obviously we don't have any arrows to charge the bow with. But that's why you're going to need stone because stone, you can go ahead and craft those into stone planks. Or not stone planks, I'm thinking too much of Minecraft. But you can go ahead and make stone bars with those, or fine stone, and craft those into arrows. And that will be your main source of damage against the Scourge Wall and all the enemies in the game. And now that we have four stone, we can go ahead and make ourselves. Uh, a stone pick because Iron Knight is also fantastic for making arrows with. In fact, I normally use Iron Knight for all my arrows. Went up against the Scourge Wall, so let's go ahead and do that. You do want to take out most of the enemies in the level when you first start off, start off just because it is always good to get that EXP and that gold. And that gold, do. But yeah, that Hornet stood no chance against me. And the Haste Beetle is great because it allows you to dodge things much, much faster. If you don't have the Haste Beetle, obviously Flame of Hope is the best. And uh, you could go with the Regent Fairy or the Ancient Bat. It does not really matter. But the Haste Beetle will just make things a bit quicker in terms of our Let's Play. And allow us to dodge out of the way of most attacks fairly quickly, as the uh, Haste Beetle implies with Haste. Now let's see. And leveling up to level 50 in a... or level 40, above level 40, in a, in a uh, kind of run of magic site is not too hard actually. All you need to do is basically visit every cave that you, you find or visit uh, biomes that reward a lot of EXP from what you kill and just level up as much as possible. Kill everything in sight because Magicide is about mass murder and genocide or Magicide. <laughs> You're just taking out everything in Magicide. Including the trees. Nothing lives in your in your wake. I'm starting to feel like maybe the guy in Magicide, like your hero is the bad guy and the Scourge is trying to protect the world from the, the devastation that you wreak. You wreak havoc upon the world with your uh, non-environmental friendly ways. But anyway, these slimes obviously stand no chance. And this boar, ooh, I didn't think he'd run that fast. Oh well. We're gonna have to, <laughs> we, we came pretty close to him. But he's not too hard to take out once you learn the attack pattern. Obviously using our, oh, okay, here we go. Level 5, obviously using our wooden sword to take things out now because uh, we don't have any arrows. But for our first skill, 
what you will be taking is the green the green skills and we go ahead and get the worst uh, skill of them all which is basically just the arrow one that shoots shoots downward I don't believe I think it's called a druid's arrow it's pretty terrible in my opinion what you do want to aim for are the flame orb which is double the arrow uh, your, your arrow damage and the dex bonus or the triple shot those are pretty good options as well but obviously it's not up to you it's RNG you gotta pray to RNG Jesus this Christmas year and pray that you get some good stats obviously he did not favor me I've been a naughty boy. And we do come across a <laughs> golden chest right off the bat. Unfortunately, it's just a scourge shield. But, I mean, I guess it's pretty good. 5 dex, 5 attack, 3 HP. It's pretty good to start off. That's actually very, very lucky. Spawning a chest in a force biome is one of the smallest, has one of the smallest chances of happening in the game, I think. So that is fairly lucky. And look at this choice. Oh, we have three doorways to go to. Which one we should use? The forest. The forest, if you have the option to go to the forest, I would say just go to the forest because it is the easiest one. And as you can see, those pigs and stuff are dropping monster hides. And these monster hides can be used in combination with the ores that you mine to go ahead and make yourself some mate or ranged uh, armor. Dex increasing armor. And let's see, just like any run, you want to stockpile on food because food can be restored, used to restore your HP as well as restore your hunger. Let's go ahead and do that. Cook up all our meat, even though it isn't Thanksgiving. There we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome sauce. And I think we have enough stone to go ahead and make ourselves, or do we want to make ourselves a piece of armor? We don't have enough to make a piece of armor, so. Yeah, we'll make ourselves a stone sword just because it's a bit more damage, a bit more of our damage output. Just like this, bam, bam, bam. Perfect, we can go ahead and sell the rest of our old tools, because those are useless to me. And we can actually go ahead and make ourselves a few bone arrows, just so we can shoot down those pesky bees that do get in the way. We do, anything to, mm, I was going to say, do anything to buy down here, but I don't think there's anything good. So we'll go ahead and move onward. Level 5 is a good way to be at, or a good place to be at after the first district. But here we are, entering the next one, Rockwood Forest. Obviously going to mine as many trees as possible. It's always it's crucial, crucial. I can't stress this enough, that you need to get as many trees as possible. Even though it may seem mundane in the first few districts, you need to mine all those trees. Because later on, trust me, you're going to need all the sticks you need. Or you need, you're going to need all the sticks that you have to go ahead and make arrows. So, we're going to make sure to mine all these trees up until my axe breaks. I'll mine all the trees until my axe breaks, and then we can go ahead and stop. As long as we have a stack, I think, in our inventory at all times, I think we should be good. Arrows, I mean, uh, <laughs> sticks and wood is also a very good uh, thing to sell to the merchant, as he does take a lot of them, and you can make a lot of bank, a lot of money off of them. Now, we're doing fairly well the second district. Hopefully not taking any damage, of course. Uh, turn around there and snipe that. Go ahead and some use some of our arrows. We're doing 20 damage with our decks, which is fantastic. The, the uh, uh, dwarf bonus from the decks plus the bonus that we got in the beginning is really paying off. But we, our axe did break there, which is fine because uh, I don't think we're going to need it. We'll, we will go ahead and make ourselves a big HP potion just because we uh, we can and continue onwards. You do want to start stockpiling, stockpiling HP potions just like in any other run of Magisite because you know you will be taking damage even though you're shooting enemies from afar. Sometimes they get a lucky hit off of you, and you do want to have the capability to restore all that HP, so that when the final boss does come, you are prepared and ready, and you can take a few hits. And <laughs> I'm not being the best demonstration of that right now. I'm taking a bunch of hits. But I think we should be fine. I think we should be good. As long as we're cautious, I think we should be dandy, just fine and dandy. And these boars look like they're just like <laughs> pigs on steroids. Jeez. Boars uh, are relatively easily taken down by the uh, power of my stone sword. And another part of this game, of course, Magisite, is learning the attack patterns of most of the mobs in the game. The boars have this charge that just kind of charges at you, and then they stop for a few seconds. It's pretty easy to learn, but what you can do is just hit the boar once, and then it charges away, and then you hit it again, and then obviously you take it out. So as long as you can learn those attack patterns, and learn how to dodge them effectively, you should be good for beating the game in any scenario including one of the most challenging uh, episodes that I've done so far is the uh, Pig Folk plus Scourge Mask uh, melee only run. You guys might want to check that out. It's a bit intense. It is one of the hardest ways to uh, clear the game. Uh, let's see here. We have an option of the forest and I think I will take it because the swamp is just a bit harder and there's less resources in there. We do have an altar here but we don't have enough gold to go ahead and pray there. I'm not even sure why we need that much gold to pray but <laughs> I guess he favors the rich. We can go ahead and sell a bunch of this stuff as well, and we do have enough uh, monster hides to make a piece of armor, but do we want to? That's the real question. I don't think we do. This monster pelt can be used to make uh, magic armor. We shouldn't need any of that stuff. 
Now we have the choice of making a iron pick or making iron armor. I think I'll go with the pick because uh, the picks are more valuable early on because you can go ahead and mine up the next tier of ore. And meanwhile, the armor is not as good because we already have a nice bonus to our decks anyway. So there's not much point in doing that. So let's go ahead and move on to the next forest biome. And you might want to chow down on some food because food does have a chance to restore your HP like it did there. And we can go ahead and slap these pigs with our meat. And not that meat. <laughs> we did leave two nice and ripe turds there. Man, that's disgusting. Magicite players do not know where the bathroom is once again. Let's see. How much sticks do we have? We don't have nearly enough. I'd like to go ahead and uh, take my own advice and chop down all the trees. Let's see. Yes, just like this. Chop down all these trees. Make sure we have a stack of uh, sticks and wood at all times. Just so we never run out. Always good to be safe. Safer than sorry. You know. Better to be safe than sorry. As the old saying goes... Uh, let's see here, and this is why we made the iron pick, so we can go ahead and mine this goldium ore, and then make ourselves a goldium pickaxe, and so on, until we get to diamondite. Because in the last level, of course, there are some ores there, that can only be mined with the power of the diamondite pick, so you want to make sure that you have that, otherwise you'll be, uh, left behind. But this spider shouldn't stand a chance against me. Our swords are doing a bunch of damage now, we shouldn't even need our arrows, but I guess we could just try to use them. Uh, just for the lulls, and I am not doing a good job of hitting this slime, there we go. And there are three rocks here. Pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice supply of iron. And of course, if we did have the miner hat, we did have a chance to go ahead and get a bunch of more uh, ore from that anyway. But it's okay that we have the Robin Hood hat. I don't think it's uh, too bad to, uh, you know, have the Robin Hood hat. We are an ancient hero of legacy. Robin Hood. Magicite in the hood. <laughs> uh, but anyway. But anyway, but anyway, but anyway, but anyway. But anyway. Uh, they want to gather as much gold as possible as well, because if you don't get enough diamondite to go ahead and make yourself a pick, you always can buy one, uh, which is always a good option if you do not have the resources, because uh, buying things, guys, money, it's all about the money in life, okay? Uh, <laughs> do not marry someone you love, marry someone who has money. Yes, if you if you learn anything from this episode, it's just uh, money is power. Yeah, <laughs> please don't do that. Please do not take any of my advice. I should not incite you to do anything, or magicite you to do anything. But B, come over here. I'll go ahead and shoot you down just because uh, you're annoying. And that's one of the best parts about being a ranger is you can just shoot stuff down when you don't like it. You don't have to risk going in there and risking your uh, your life. You can just shoot it down from afar. Sure, it seems cowardly, but you know, look at Legolas. He's pretty epic, right? I mean, people don't mess with him, so... Let's continue onwards. I think this boss is standing and blocking the gateway to the next level. But I will go ahead and kill him just because he is a boss and he's standing there. And he's just tempting me to kill him. He is going to hurt himself with his own attack there, which I always thought was kind of funny. But this boss is pretty easy to kill. He just has the standard attack pattern of moving back, and uh, <laughs> he just killed himself. But uh, we do level up to level 10 there, and we'll take our next skill. And we do get the Flame Orb, which go has, it doubles our arrow damage if we shoot an arrow through it like that. Or like that, I should say. That arrow will, have, will do double, double damage. And here we are at the gateway of the crossroads, and I think we'll be taking the purple biome in the cave. The ice biome is just pretty trolly. I don't like it at all. And I don't think we will be praying just yet because I want to save up our gold for the gold uh, for the diamond I pick. Let's see. Mr. Uh, Blacksmith. Actually, I'm going to talk to the merchant first. I like him better than you. Let's see. Go ahead and sell a bunch of this stuff that we do not need. Shrooms can be used to make the uh, m uh, magic healing potions. Uh, mana healing potions. We can go ahead and make ourselves a bunch more stone arrows, which is pretty nice. And I think we also have enough. We can go ahead and refine these monster hides like this. And we have three refined leather. And then we go ahead and go to the blacksmith. And go ahead and make ourselves three iron ingots. And with those ironite bars and refined leathers, we can go up to the tanner. Hello, Mr. Tanner. Place our ingots and our leather into the slots here and make ourselves some elegant leather. And with that, we can go ahead and make ourselves deck boost, deck, dex boosting armor. Just like that. Plus 4 dex, plus 2 HP, it's a good time. And I think we actually have enough to go ahead and make ourselves another one. Let's go back down to the blacksmith and ask him to... Oh, Baba Blacksmith. Go ahead and make ourselves another piece of armor. Just because uh, I want it. I want the dex bonuses. Thank you very, very much for your service. And we, we do have a full set of armor now. We do, we do. <laughs> Let's go ahead and restore our HP and our hunger while we are here at the district. Just like this. There we go. Perfecto, perfecto. Let's head into the cave. Now, the cave is, uh, you've probably seen it before, but the cave is home to two different types of, mo types of mobs. Well, technically three, but two main ones. 
That was a bit of a lag spike there. I didn't even see how that bat even hit me. Oh well. We did just break our sword in the face of the spider, which is obviously not the best. We will have to make another one. I'll just go ahead and uh, see if we cannot make ourselves a bone sword. Just like this. There we go. Sword hilt. But yeah, the cave is home to two types of mobs. The bat and the spider. And both are equally annoying. But I think the bats are a bit more annoying. They're like a glorified slime. They just kind of run at you. Or they fly at you, not run. Uh, and they're a bit annoying in general. And these things are called broom of their eggs. And that is a mimic, but I'll get into that later. This mimic uh, here will <laughs> attack me. He's basically a fake chest, but he does have a chance to drop a bunch of diamondite gear. So if we can go ahead and kill him, we do get two diamondite already, which is fantastic. Thank you, mimic, for your uh, your kind donation. And these things on the ground are called Broodmother Eggs, and that is a fake rock. So much happening at once. But yeah, if you destroy enough Broodmother Eggs, the Broodmothers get angry. And there's basically like a giant boss that comes and tries to kill you. Uh, but yes, the fake rocks are just look like normal rocks, and they'll, go, they'll try to kill you uh, if you try to mine them. But I think the Broodmother is coming because I did feel the lag spike in my bones. And here he is. Here she is, I should say. And we can use the power of our flame. Always use your... Uh, your uh, your abilities guys, I see so many Magicite players just ignoring their abilities and really it is a very very good resource you should be using it does damage the output of your arrows so you should use that whenever possible and obviously that Broodmother gave us a bunch of EXP and sometimes I can even drop health potions so it is always worth killing them depending on uh, d no matter what run you're doing a me melee or mag magic or uh, you know ranged it doesn't matter you should be killing the Broodmothers if you have enough damage to do it, you should be doing it because it is a good. They give you so much good rewards for the effort that it takes to kill them, that I think it's uh it's never not worth it. Let's go ahead and mine up the rest of the stuff. And our stone pick is about to break, which is fine because we do have an iron pick. Let's go ahead and set up our flame orb again and see if we can't go ahead and destroy this brood mother in cold blood. And we do one shot those guys, the spiders too, with our flame orb, which is pretty nice. And let's see, this Broodmother shouldn't hold up too much longer. We are doing more damage with the bow than we are with the sword, which is also pretty cool. There we go, look at that, two uh, HP potions just from killing that Broodmother. We can go ahead and put those in our inventory. Uh, bam, go ahead and heal ourselves up. And this chest drops us off a bone blade, which isn't too good. We can use that to make another sword if we run out of durability on our other one, though. Which I guess is something. Let's go ahead and uh, waste, or not waste, but use up the rest of the durability on our stone pick, because... Uh, we do have the iron one in the stocks, in the store, in the storage, so we can go ahead and use that one once this one breaks. Another Broodmother, you have spawned, and you should uh, be fairly easy to kill. Go ahead and jump and dodge him. And again, just learning the pattern of the Broodmother, making sure you know when she stops and just dodging out of the way. You should be able to kill it relatively quickly, just like that. And we are level 15, which uh, we can take our last skill. And we do get another bad one. I was hoping for the dex increasing one, but this one is... I guess it's not too bad, but uh, it's not one of the best ones. Go ahead and summon our wolf, who I guess it does a pretty good amount of damage. There's a bit of lag over there, but... The wolf will not actually knock over the broom of their eggs, and he's not actually killing the spider, which I find kind of annoying. So I will have to do that for myself. And the spider did four damage to me because of a lag spike. I hate it. Lag, why must you be so annoying? Oh, lag. Well, let's go ahead and kill the spider, though. And the Broodmother is spawned, and I was not ready for that. Oh, well. Go ahead and jump our way back up here, and we should be able to kill it relatively quickly. Broodmother, die. If you just, like, jump in the direction you want the Broodmother to go, she will go in that direction, which is, uh, always a good, always a good time. You can't take too many arrows to the face, can you, Broodmother? No, you cannot. But that is a great amount of EXP. And we are racking up a nice amount of gold as well, which is pretty, pretty nice. As with that amount of gold, we can go ahead and uh, craft ourselves, or not craft ourselves, but, you know, buy ourselves a uh, diamondite pick. And this fake rock gave me some trouble. I hate fake rocks. These mimic, mimic rocks that just want to be rocks, but they're not. Go ahead and they jump out and they kill you. But anyway, we are at the gateway of three doors. And we will be taking the cave again because, uh, as I said before, it is one of the best ones. Bam, let's go. And we did get two more HP potions, which is great. Go ahead and make ourselves a big one. And I think we can go ahead and uh, sell up all of our junk, including our spider webs. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and make ourselves some more stone arrows. Coal can go. Diamondite is fantastic. It can stay. And the bone blade can stay too, just in case we run out of durability of our uh, bone sword. But I think that should wrap up what we'll do here. Let's go ahead and heal up on our hunger. Eat some food. We do restore two health from that food, actually. Uh, you do have a chance to re regain one HP from each food that you eat. But here we are in edition number nine, and that bat was so kind enough 
that he dropped two HP potions. Thank you so much. I love you. Uh, not literally, but we do get an Emerald Katana from that chest, so I will be swapping it out. Uh, and the big mana potion is relatively useless. But this Katana should do a bit more damage. We are now two-shotting these uh, spiders instead of one sh or not, three-shotting them. Let's continue on mining everything, because if you mine everything, you get enough Ironite to make yourself a ton of arrows. And that is always a good time. It is always a good time. You want to make sure you have enough Ironite to take out, or enough arrows to take out the Scourge Wall. That way you aren't left behind in the dust. And these bats and <laughs> the birds and the bees, I was going to say, the bats and the spiders are, will not uh, survive today because uh, I need more EXP than you need to live. Come on. Go ahead and summon our wolf just because these guys are being annoying. And I think the wolf is a bit glitchy. He does push me around, and he does damage the things he's not even next to, so I'm not really sure how he works. Sean Young, get on that. There's a, there's a bug in the game. I needed to fix it. But anyway, I think the broodmother should be angry at me. Come on, broodmother. I know you're angry. I know you wanna eat a magicite player. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> and I did not mean to spawn that flame the flame orb, but uh, I guess I did anyway. So we can use it to our advantage and just take things out, because uh, that's what we do. Magicite players just, uh, you know, killing all the endangered species. Now, let's see. I think the broodmother is going to come uh, now. Yet yeah, there she is. And we do have our flame orb up and ready to go. Go and take it to the face, broodmother. Fire arrows. And that's only like four fire arrows, and she's already dead. But this Robin Hood hat is doing a good job of giving us some uh, additional dexterity. And I think we should be alright, and we should be good to go. And we did take out two bats. Uh, two bats with one stone. Uh, two bats with one arrow. To be literal with it. We are one-shotting the bats too, which is fantastic. As you can see, as a ranger, uh, what you're going to want to do is obviously take take a stance far away from an enemy. And just go ahead and hit him, pot shot him. Because uh, you take no damage yourself, and you do kill an enemy. Which is, I think, is a very, very good trade. <laughs> And we are un run running out of arrows, stumbling over my words. But yes, let's go ahead and make some more of those. We can go ahead and take out this brood mother. And uh, double jump, use our skill, because you know what? Nine damage <laughs> is pretty much nothing. That's why I thought the trait was useless. It is pretty useless. I mean, I never really use it. Nine damage compared to like 38 is pretty in insignificant. But uh, we do come at the next set of doors, and I think I'll be going to the vault because the dungeon, I'm not ready for the dungeon yet. And one more brood mother decides to show up. And you know what? I am not complaining because more EXP is always appreciated, Broodmother. Thank you for your heart and your EXP. I will gladly take it. I will gladly consume all of your EXP. And hopefully you drop some HP potions for me to go ahead and drink up to. Please? Okay, thank you. And that should wrap up the cave. We'll go ahead and go into the, not the dungeon, but the Velt. Mushroom Land. <laughs> or Mushroom Hell. But, uh... Let's see, Big Mysterious Potion. These Big Mysterious Potions are a bit of a misnomer. People often think that it's just like a random thing that they do, but they either restore HP, they restore, they can either restore HP, uh, your mana, or they just throw down a big vial of poison. So while you're using them, it is always best to go ahead and jump, and see that's 7 mana, but he will throw it down. Nope, okay, that's 4 HP, which is pretty fantastic for us. Sometimes they do have a chance of being vials of poison, and I'll show you what a vial of poison does right now. It, you throw down like a... Like I said, it's a vial of poison, and it just poisons things, and you set fire to the rain, and things go horribly wrong. There's a glitch, of course, with the uh, vial of poison. You have to, uh, I think you have to throw it one more time. Yeah, there you go. It stays in your inventory. But, uh, I think, uh, let's see. Go ahead and sell our bone blade. Won't be needing those anymore. And we don't have as much stone as I thought we would. We do not have enough arrows, nearly enough arrows. But I think it should be fine. I think we should be fine. Do we have any, uh, nope, we don't have enough stuff to make anything else, so I think we should move on. But before we do, I'm going to take a quick break here, be back in a little bit. What's up guys, welcome back, sorry about that. I did go ahead and clear out some of the middle district, just one district, just because it was a bit boring and I decided to cut it out, but anyway, we are back in the caves, we did go ahead and take out some of the broodmothers here. But I hope you guys didn't miss too much. Obviously, we just did the same thing as always. Just taking out mobs. It was just a bit boring. So, I decided to leave it out. But let's go ahead and continue onwards here. We did pick up ourselves a Diamond Eye Pickaxe, though, which is pretty, pretty nice. As well as a Jelly Blade from the, uh, the Velt Biome. And uh, Broodmother here is angry at me. So, I will go ahead and take her out because, uh, you are annoying, Broodmother. You are so very annoying. But, yeah, the Fire Wisp does do make it do double damage, which is fantastic. Fantastic for us, and that EXP is always a good deal for us as well. 
Let's go ahead and take out that bat. That bat do. <laughs> oh, two rocks. There's a gauntlet of rocks there. Jeez. I've never seen two of those at the same spot in the same spot. But this broom mother did get a pot shot off on me. I did not realize she was there. But let's let go last it up in here and take her out. Never mind. We did run out of arrows at the <laughs> the last second. Things are not going too well for me coming back. Uh, but yeah, we did skip the Velt District, which was a Mushroom District, which I did have some trouble with, so I did have to cut it out. But basically, all you have to do in that biome is just take things out. I just had some recording issues. But anyway, let's continue on here and see if we can't mine up all the rocks. All the rocks! And uh, get ourselves some arrows as well. Because we are we have run out of arrows. You want to make sure you always have a supply of those. And uh, all these spiders can die. We have no use for the silk, though, since we already have a bow. We actually started off with a bow because we are the Dwelf. The Dwelf, a dwarf, and an elf combined. What a, a very original name, Mr. Shang Young. And now let's see if another Broodmother spawns. Hello, Broodmother. Would you like to spawn and eat me? Please? I guess not. Let's go ahead and move on to the Velt. Since I didn't get to show you guys, I did uh, stop the recording, so... Let's go onwards and see, see it with our own eyes. But anyway... Let's make some more uh, potions here, and we can go ahead and drop off the coal, the vial of poison, and make ourselves some more s uh, stone arrows. Drop off some more resources, and I think we should be good and gushy. And we can go ahead and pick up this uh, HP potion because it is always good to pick those up. But let's go ahead and move onwards into the road vine Velt. And I didn't get to show you guys this before, but the Velt is home to many various different kinds of creatures. Let's see, I'll go ahead and kill these guys up here. Uh, they're just mushroom creatures, they're not too bad, I guess. Uh, but I did have just some problems. Oh my goodness, six damage! That is a ton of damage, man. That's almost as much as the dragons in the volcano. But, uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and drop this jelly blade because we got a new one! Great. And we can have to drink- we're gonna have to drink up another HP potion because, uh, these guys are doing a real number on me. Let's see, this mushroom can die as well, and you, you little tiki torch and mushroom, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying Tiki Torch because there is an enemy in the uh, swamp biome which is the, basically the same thing as the mushroom from this biome. Let's go ahead and use our wolf and the wolf is a terrible companion because he just runs into things and it's a bit funny actually he's just gnawing on these mobs. He's actually not doing a bad job. Thank you wolf for just slaying the mobs in front of me. Thank you kindly for your services to me, myself, and I. And these, uh, the, the squids, uh, the flying squids don't do too much damage to you. So that's not something you really have to worry about. Let's see down here. This uh, mushroom can die as well. And I think on this level we should go ahead and pick up some more trees because we have not been doing that. As I advise you to, we haven't been doing it anyway. So let's go and do it now. Just so we have enough sticks to go ahead and make ourselves arrows. We could just break our axe on this level. I think that's the best idea. Let's come back to here, down here and slay all the mobs. All the mobs can be slayed. Because EXP is a nice thing to have. In the next district, we should go ahead and make ourselves a gold piece of armor. And hopefully we have enough diamondite as well to make... Or dynamite? <laughs> enough diamondite. To make ourselves a piece of dynamite, diamondite uh, or luminous uh, leather. To make ourselves a luminous cloak or a luminous hap or... Hap? I just combined the words helmet and cap into hap. I am a smart person, guys. Don't worry. Let's go ahead and drop off all of our stuff here. And see if we can't go ahead and take out these mobs down here as well. And of course, my clicking does not work. It chooses that time to my mouse for not to work. And we do take six damage. Oh my goodness, and there's a fake rock. How much worse can my luck get? Seriously. And this squid is just being annoying as well. Come on. Yes, there you go. And it does drop two HP potions, which does make up for it being annoying. Let's go ahead and do that. And I think we are almost... We're going a bit hungry, so... Let's go ahead and eat some food just because we can. And we do restore 2 HP from that, which is pretty, pretty nice, if I do say so myself. Uh, let's go ahead and mine up this rock, because mining rocks is fun, guys. Uh, just go outside and mine some rocks, you know, it's a good exercise. For those muscles of yours, which you don't have. Uh, I'm sorry. But we, we are, we are going to go ahead and go back to the cave biome, because uh, the cave is one of the best places to go and get some resources and uh, some EXP. So let's go ahead and trash a bunch of this stuff that we don't need anymore. And make ourselves some more arrows for killing all the broodmothers. And I think we should be good to move on. But before we do that, actually, we don't have enough. Actually, we do have enough. Just kidding. We have enough to make ourselves a piece of goldium. Or not goldium, but a piece of goldium armor. Let's see. Go up to the tanner. Mr. the tanner. Where are you? Slim. Can you go ahead and uh, craft me some gold armor? There you go. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, sir. And I'll go ahead and sell my old one. And we can go ahead and uh, venture again, yet again, for like the fifth time this episode, into a cave. And of course, as the deck space character, this is a deck space guide if you guys uh, didn't watch the beginning for some reason, I don't know. But uh, a deck space character should always be going to the caves. As I've said multiple times, the brood mothers, of course, give you a bunch of EXP. And they're fantastic just to murder for fun. Guys, you just murder them for fun because killing things in, in video games is of fun. And it's, it definitely encourages a healthy learning environment for all students of all ages. But anyway, let's go ahead and slay this brood mother too because she's annoying. That's also a thing you should learn about Mad from Magisite is that killing people that you think are annoying... Actually, I probably shouldn't be saying this. But killing these spiders because they're annoying is, uh, is fine because it's a video game. But don't do it in real life because, you know, you could get in trouble for that. So let's... Oh, my axe. Or not my axe, but... I did run out of arrows there, so I have to finish off the brood mother with my bear, not my bear hands, my, my my bear sword. My bear sword. Be kind of strange to fizz, finish something off with your bear hands, I guess. What if you actually had bear hands? Like, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen the Yogg's cast uh, uh, Yogg pod, but they do talk about bear hands or bear claws to be in that, and I think that it would be very very hard to live if you did have bear claws or bear hands, at that matter. Let's go ahead and equip the Jelly Blade because our Emerald Katana did go ahead and run out, which is uh, not the best. And my friends are playing Rift, which is fantastic because Rift is a terrible game. Just kidding, Rift is amazing. Don't hate on me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Magicite is 100 times better, right guys? Yes, yeah, I know you all agree with me. But I think we should go ahead and make ourselves some more arrows because this Broodmother is challenging me to a duel. I've already killed so many of you, I'm not even sure why you even bother trying to kill me. Not even sure. Maybe you just want to prove yourself to like a female. Be like, "Oh, I killed a Magicite player. Oh, you're so hot. But my arrows are hotter than you, so I will go ahead and burn you alive with my fire arrows." Now, we do get the Dex bonus. Hopefully, we'll get a Dex bonus every time we level up from the uh, uh, Robin Hood hat. I don't think we got it there, but that's okay. We are level 33 though, which is fantastic. As we do have 46 Dex 30. So things are going pretty well. You want to make sure that you uh, obviously stock up on your HP potions. We do have 15, so I don't think we're running low at all. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, that is why you need HP potions, guys. Because you need, to, you need to heal yourself back up after you take damage. That's 26 HP. Let's jump back down here and kill all those spiders in one hit. And I know he's playing Rift. Can you shoot up? I know he's playing Rift. You don't have to keep telling me. Uh, let's see. Kill this guy. And there's two brood mothers that spawn, like I said before. Uh, I might have not have recorded this part, but killing brood mothers, uh, two brood mothers, is not that hard. Just keep your cool. Make sure you take one of, one of them at a, at a time, so you're not fighting two enemies at once. Let's go ahead and take this one on the left out first, actually. Come here, brood mother. I know I killed your children, but I don't feel sorry for it at all. There we go, and we can go ahead and uh, pick up this HP potion. Oh, I guess not. Go ahead. Gonna have to kill this brood mother first, because he's being a bit of a jerk. And uh, here we are, brood mother. Yes, die to me. A critical to hit, 238 damage. This, we'll go ahead and finish off that brood mother. But anyway, we do have a choice between the dungeon and the crater, and I think the dungeon is the better option for us because the crater is just so hard, and I never like going to the crater. We do have ourselves, ooh, a nice option here. I think this is a, the dex increasing uh, god. Oh no, never mind. Boqueth blesses you, full HP. Thank you very much. That was definitely a very good. Uh, use of our gold, I think, anyway. I'm not even sure if we were down HP or not. <laughs> if we weren't, oh well, but if we were, good for the gods. Now, I think we do have enough a uh, goldium to go ahead and make ourselves the next piece of armor. So let's hop to it and make ourselves that piece just like this. Go up to the tanner. Let's see. Go ahead and take all my stuff, all my stuff, and make myself another piece of gold armor. Because gold armor is nice and warm, and I like to wear it. I took one damage. I'm not sure what I took the damage from. I may have t might have taken a damage from the Jelly Blade. I'm not sure. Sometimes that happens. But anyway, the dungeon is a more challenging biome, although it does hold some good rewards. As you can see, we already presented with a bunch of chests. Hopefully, we actually find ourselves a golden chest, and we can go ahead and uh, get ourselves a fire bow. A fire bow. And these mimics actually do drop uh, some nice gold. Or not gold, but uh, luminous leather. We didn't get any from that one, which is fine. That... Skeleton is taking pot shots at me, so I have to be weary about that. Wolf, go kill him while I take out the skeleton here. Uh, he did take, do 7 damage to me, which I do not like. Go away. Thank you. It's very much appreciated for you to banish me. 
And then we do go ahead and pick ourselves up a Riven Wrath scale, which I don't think is actually better. Is it? No, it's not. We can go ahead and trash the Riven Wrath scale. I think we did find the Scourge Shield fairly on in the Let's Play. Or in the guide, I should say. Dex based guide. And we do find ourselves a chest. Please, Fire Bow. No, Scourge Blade. I guess that's okay too. Uh, let's go ahead and equip that. The Scourge Blade is just like the Obsidian Sword, or almost like it. It does do some good work. And a Fire Bow. Yes, thank you. The Fire Bow does double the damage of our arrows. We can go ahead and trash a regular bow. And look at this. Bam, 113 damage. So if you guys are wondering, the Fire Bow is one of the new uh, items added in the uh, 1.5 update. It does double the damage of your arrows and give you plus three dex, so it is a fantastic weapon, which is why I wanted to come here. It is, of course, very, very useful. And I think maybe, did these effects stack? Can I go ahead and do like 200 damage to this thing? Okay, no, I thought, okay, so basically the fire arrow, what it does is it makes it so that this flame orb uh, buff that we have is always up. And our arrows are always doing double the, the amount of damage. Which, if you think about it, is <laughs> fantastic. And hopefully we can actually get ourselves some rings here as well. Although it is not going well. It is not going well in terms of rings. Rings are these little items, if you saw in my inventory. Let's come back up here. And uh, you do have slots for rings. They do go ahead and boost your uh, dexterity and uh, attack and stuff. So let's see. These things do 4 damage to us. Let's jump around. We do get a ring of insanity, I think, which is not the best ring for a melee, or I mean a ranged guy. It is good for melee, though. Uh, there's a lot of chests here, actually, so we might get ourselves a good ring. And is this a... And it's another uh, Scourge Blade, so I guess we will just trash our old one. Pick up a new one. Why not? This is a Ring of Rage. Let's go ahead and equip it just because... Just because uh, for the lols. Just for the lols. Let's see. Uh, Riven Wrath scale we don't need. We can go ahead and break open this chest, though. Dodge around these spiky balls as they do do. Do do. <laughs> uh, four damage to us if we do get hit by them. And this guy here stands on chance. He did do one damage to me. But these genies will also get one shot, which is fantastic because uh, the genies' fireballs do uh, eight damage. Which obviously you don't want to get hit by. And we are out of arrows. Oh no. Let's go ahead and make some more though. That's why we have a bunch of uh, sticks and stuff. So we can go ahead and... Uh, sticks and stones will break everybody's bones. Especially when they're lit on fire, right? <laughs> and this mimic, hopefully you'll drop some luminous leather. No, you will not. You're being a jerk, mimic. I hate you. And the subsidian sword I think is... Is it better? It is just slightly better than this. So we will go ahead and equip the obsidian sword. And this genie, oh my goodness, that was a bit of a glitch with his, uh, his EXP and stuff there. He, did, he like, basically just threw it through the wall. We can go ahead and, uh, de-equip all of our junk and take out this Mimic, too. Unfortunately, the Mimics have not been kind to us. They haven't been giving us too good of stuff. Uh, we did take four damage there from that. I did not want to take four damage there from that, but whatever. And as you can see, the next base character is basically just learning the attack patterns of enemies. You don't even need to learn that much. All you have to do is dodge around and make sure that you don't get hit. That is the main gist of the game, ladies and gentlemen, like all roguelikes. Let's go ahead and enter the dungeon again because the crater and the volcano I just don't want to bother with. They are not the best, and I think this is the last district before the Scourge. Let's go ahead and prepare. Uh, the big mysterious potion obviously can be poison, it can be magic, it can be whatever. That was a vial of poison, so I'm glad that I jumped. Let's go ahead and heal our HP all the way up and prepare for the fight. We can go ahead and trash this Y-Hander because it will be pretty useless. The Jelly Blade can also get trashed. And we do have enough Diamondite to make ourselves one piece of Diamondite armor. Uh, ideally, I would like to have uh, the full set of Diamondite armor, but I guess this will not be the day that we do get one. And I did! Oh my goodness, I'm a, such an idiot. I made a Diamondite Helm. Guys, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Basically, the way to get make the Diamondite uh, armor is the same way. You combine it with the monster hides, but I am a complete idiot and I <laughs> did it wrong. So this level will be just, uh, <laughs> I guess, more exciting for you guys. It'll be harder on me, though. Let's make ourselves 115 iron arrows. That's why I always keep 115. I always keep a sack of sticks on me. But I think we should be good now to face the final boss in our dex-based character guide. If you guys have enjoyed this guide so far, make sure to leave a like and comment your feedback down below. But now, we will be taking on the Scourge. Let's go. With our fire bow, the Scourge layer should not be too hard. As you can see, there's a... Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. There's a different kind of ore here, actually, called Crystalline Shards. Or Crystalline Fragments. And you can combine these Crystalline Fragments to make Crystalline Shards, which are essentially high-damaging projectiles that do 150 damage per shot. And we will be mining as many of those as possible. The only way to mine them is to get yourself a Diamondite Pick. That's why I stress the fact that you need one. And in this level, you want to fire your arrows constantly everywhere. Because there are invisible worms or tunnel worms that will pop up at you. 
Gotta make sure you kill the, kill those before they pop up and do some, deal some damage to you like that guy right there. The Tiki Mask that float around aren't too much of a threat if you take them out pretty early. But yes, I think we should be fine to go ahead and uh, mine up all this stuff. And obviously the Ranger, I think, is one of the best ways to beat the game. Obviously because if we can't, it's pretty easy. We can take out all these guys, not take any damage ourselves. And go ahead and uh, mine up everything in sight. Let's see, let's mine up all the rest of this stuff too. And make sure there's no uh, worms trying to kill us. And the Firebow obviously is one of the best pickups. That's why I always encourage you to get the Lockmaster trait. Because the Golden Chest can't hold the Firebow. And the Firebow obviously is one of the best weapons in the game for a deck space run. The other thing you can get is the uh, uh, Laser Crossbow. Uh, which is uh, basically the same thing. It does double the air. It does actually, I think, uh, I think they changed it actually. The Laser Crossbow used to, what it used to do is do like plus 10 dex or something. But they changed it to do damage based on your magic. So I would not recommend that anymore. Let's go ahead and take out the rest of these guys here. So basically it's just standing from afar, taking everything out with your bow. Making sure you don't get hit too much. And uh, that's the gist of the run. I did just go ahead and push that tunnel, tunnel worm. But yeah. I think we should be good to take everything out. Kill you. And uh, one second, I gotta <laughs> take a drink of water. I am back. I am back and let's go. Oh my goodness, the game audio is all the way up now. Let's keep going though. Uh, yeah. I would not recommend taking breaks like that in the middle of the game. Because, obviously you can get yourself killed. But of course they gotta take a drink of water because you know hydration is more important than killing the Scourge. And let's go ahead and kill the Scourge mask as well. And of course there was a little hidden guy there as well. But I think we should be able to wrap this up. And uh, if we can't, go ahead and get to the end of this level. Is there still more? Okay, that's the end. So, with these crystalline fragments, we can go ahead and combine those and make some shards. And with these shards, we can actually go ahead and uh, destroy the Scourge Wall. Scourge Wall, your, your reign of tyranny over the Magislite world is over. I did waste one of the crystalline shards, which is not the best. But let's go ahead and take them out. 150 damage per shot. You're not living this Scourge Wall. And there's no way. There is no way in all hell. Keep going. And this Firebow is going to do 118 damage. It's almost enough. Almost as much as the Crystalline Shards. But yeah, attack, the Scourge Wall isn't too hard to beat itself. It's really just the minions that are in his lair. All you want to do is dodge his projectiles. And I think the next few shots should take him out. Come on, Scourge Wall, you can't live anymore. Yes, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, if you guys did enjoy this run, this deck space slash ranger guide, make sure to leave a like. Comment your feedback down below. Subscribe for more. Let's see, did we get anything good? Anything at all? Anything at all? Okay, nothing. But anyway, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. I'll see you guys next time.